All right. So today we're going to be talking about something that I think is extremely disgusting, 100% downright deplorable in every way, shape, and form. Also extremely scary, but at the same time, I'm not surprised that this is happening. Some of you are probably wondering what I'm talking about, and that is pro-Palestinian content being heavily censored on very large social media platforms, platforms like Instagram and Facebook. Now, I first found out about this through an Al Jazeera segment they ran during one of their shows, and they posted here on YouTube. Now, I can't play any of this in this video because I might get copyrighted. So I will link this down in the description below because I think this is a really, really, really great piece. Um, in the first half of this, they talk about um, a lot of anti-Semitic and uh, like anti-Palestinian content that has been being posted on social media in the past couple of weeks. And then they also talk about how pro-Palestinian content is just being heavily censored, removed from these platforms. So I will link this down in the description. I think you guys should all go give, go and give it a watch because it's uh, it's a really great piece. But we have a Guardian article here that goes over um, what's been going on on Instagram and uses some specific examples as well. Instagram users accuse platform of censoring posts supporting Palestine. Users say their posts no longer appear at top of feeds and some suspect platform is shadow banning or demoting content. Instagram users are accusing the social network of purposely censoring posts in support of Palestine, underscoring long-standing concerns about unfair moderation as war rages in Gaza. Hanem Mustafa, and I'm so sorry if I pronounced any of the names wrong in this article, I really am. Please correct me if I pronounced the names wrong. An Instagram user with 866 followers based in New York City said that since she began posting about developments in Palestine as Israel mounted its siege in the past week, her stories, photos, and videos that disappear after 24 hours have been receiving significantly less views. Friends and followers have messaged Mustafa to tell her that her posts are no longer appearing at the top of her Instagram feeds, her name has become unsearchable on the social network, and they are unable to interact with her posts. Hundreds of others have shared similar experiences, said Nadam Nashif again. I'm sorry if I mispronounced. Founder and director of social media company Watch, to Watch Group. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. The Arab Center for Social Media Advancement, which has begun tracking the issue. The Watchdog Group and others suspect the platform is shadow banning or demoting content related to the conflict in the algorithm. Unfortunately, shadow banning is just one of the many ways in which we have seen Palestinian content silenced and censored over the last week. He said... This has been a trend of meta in times of crisis, and we saw a significant spike of Palestinians and allies reporting limited reach and errors which content, with content they posted about the ongoing crisis in Palestine. So um, I, I always forget this, but uh, meta does own, I mean, it's that's Facebook, and they do own Instagram as well. Um, and this is not something that is actually new. So this is an article from October 19th um, that also gives a pretty good, very short, brief overview of what's been going on. But I uh, I found another piece from Al Jazeera from earlier this year where they are alleging this is happening on Twitter as well. Uh, digital rights groups say social media giants have restricted, suspended the accounts of Palestinian journalists and activists. So this is an article, again, from the beginning of this year where they say, well, this is what's going on on Twitter. But I also found an article from 2022, another really, really good article here from The Intercept, where they talk about <laughs> Facebook uh, censoring pro-Palestinian content. Now, but lo and behold, again, not surprised, I found an article from 2021 where they say the exact same shit. Facebook is censoring discussion of certain rights issues, pro-Palestinian content, okay? Again, I'm not surprised that these American-based United States social media companies. Uh, I, I'm I'm not surprised that they're that they're garbage. I'm not surprised that they're censoring this type of content. It doesn't surprise me in the least, but it does fucking piss me off. Okay, it does make me very fucking upset. This is just another instance. This is just one more fucking thing. This is just one more of these instances where Palestinian voices, they are just, they are so rarely heard in the world media space, okay? They are. Pro -Pal Palestinians' voices are so rarely ever heard. It is hard for them to get messages out to the world because the social media platforms don't want them to do it. The apartheid regime that Palestinians live under, they clearly don't want them to do it. All of the outlets that 
these people should have to be able to speak out against certain things, they are taken away from them. Even the United States-based social media companies are censoring these people. That's how fucking bad it is. I, I need to, I don't think I could stress this enough. That is how bad Palestinians' lives are. They can't even post. E even, even, not even Palestinian people though. I mean, just pro-Palestinian content in general. It, it, it's being banned, outright banned on these social media platforms. Which is fucking disgusting. That is horrible. It's just, it's, I, I mean, I'm, again, the, the social media companies, for the most part, you know, they're garbage. Facebook has done so much terrible shit in the past. I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't use Facebook at all because I don't, I, I just, I don't trust Meta, but I wanted to point this out. I wanted to bring to light, uh, this issue. I wanted to raise awareness about it. I saw Majority Report cover it, um... I guess last week, I think they covered it. I'm not 100%. I don't remember exactly when they covered it. But I haven't seen too many too many people cover this. Again, it's it's not a new issue. So it's been going on for a long time, which fucking makes it even worse, in my opinion. It makes it even worse because it's been going on since before um, this uh, conflict uh, really popped off. So... Guys, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of these social media companies uh, limiting pro-Palestinian content, outright banning it. Does it surprise you? Does it not surprise you? Um, you know, have you had posts yourself uh, that you've made on social media that's pro-Palestine? Has it gotten removed? Do you know people that have gotten their stuff removed? Please, please, please let me know down below in the comments.